God bless everybody. Today it is April 12th of 2023. This is an update on the paradigm of the three modern day kings. Um, not much has actually changed. I've added a number of things to it and the first video is about three hours long because of the amount of detail that I went into to show you all the connections. So I'm going to try to make this a shorter version. So the paradigm of three modern day kings I believe affects three leaders of today that reflect three leaders of the past. Um, Reuben Revlin, which was Zedekiah in the past, is Zedekiah today. Reuben Revlin would be Zedekiah. He reflects the same amount of time that Reuben Revlin was in office that affected that king the day Daniel um, and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all these guys were on the ground. You have to realize that all these prophets were on the ground about the same time. That's why they're feeding off each other. There is some gaps and stuff, but basically they're feeding off each other, but they're saying the same exact thing, same thing, and so we need to watch that. So the three leaders we need to watch are Reuben Revlin, which I believe is Zedekiah, he was the president of Israel from 2014 to 2021. The new leader or president of Israel is Isaac Herzog. And I consider him Jehokahim. And he became president of Israel in 2021. Now, a lot of people will equate the leader of Israel to Netanyahu. But he's the prime minister. He's not the president or the ceremonial leader of the uh, the uh, state of Israel. And the third player um, that I take into this three modern day kings paradigm is Erdogan of Turkey, and I consider him Nebuchadnezzar or the, um, in the paradigm because of the time of length he's been in office and how it reflected Nebuchadnezzar in the in the verses that these prophets give us. And so he actually became prime minister and then president over time. But he's been in office approximately since 2002 when he was elected. So I allude to three main prophets, but it, it wraps into so many different prophets. And you'll see that as you open up the paradigm because it gets into Ezekiel. It gets into all these different guys. And what they were saying was basically the same things. And that's what I keep saying. This has played out in the past. It's going to play out again in the future. And so if you know what happened in the past, if you look at these prophets, they told you what's coming. So I always allude to Daniel 8 and Daniel 10. Um, there's some other stuff in Daniel, but those are the two main ones that I, I've been really uh, working on now because that pertains to now. But actually, if you get into seven, chapter 7 of Daniel, it starts to get into the forming of the kingdoms and uh, what those kingdoms are and who they are. Isaiah 28 to 38 and Jeremiah 26 to 45 all tell you exactly what's coming up. They play out this scene for you in all three of these characters. Um, on, while they're on the ground and they're all playing and feeding off each other and what they're basically telling you is the Kurds and Iran are going to align and Turkey's going to crush both these nations that Egypt and Turkey will align with Israel and that once Iran falls from the hands of Turkey they will attack Egypt and the Israel and I've gone through how that's going to happen on the map now, I'm not going to go into each prophecy um, or each um, prophet and how those verses affect you this very minute because I'm going to do each a video on each of them so you can break them down and see how each of the prophets affect each other and so how they're basically working in tandem together to show you what's coming up in the future. This video is to show you how I came up with the paradigm and how it's going to affect us in the future. So when we get into this paradigm, and what I had done was I was walking through all the prophets and matching them up, and I was realizing that some of the prophets were saying exactly the same thing, and that there was date stamps attached to these uh, prophets, attached to a king or a leader of that time, and so they would say 
something like um, of this month, of this day, of this king, this thing would happen. And I kept picking up on this. I'm like, well, this this has to make some sense here. So I started to lay this stuff out, and it did. And when I did finally get to the end of it, I realized that when I applied it to the parable of the frig tree, it fit in perfectly. I didn't really have to change anything. It just laid in, and it fit multiple different groupings in this timeline. And I didn't have to change or adjust anything and it makes sense on top of it. So I just wanted to show you how this all works out. So I talked about Reuben, Rebel, and Zedekiah. He's the Israeli president, or he was, from 2014 to 2021, and how he will be a major factor in 21 to 25 based on the paradigm. Isaac Herzog, which would be Jehokamim, um, became president on July 9th of 2021. And if you go to um, Erdogan, um, I equate him with Nebuchadnezzar. Now, he's the prime minister and was elected in 2002 and became president in 2014 and I believe will be re-elected in 23 on May 14th and um, become the new, uh, sustain his presidentship. Each of these players matter. Now, there's other players that matter in the paradigm because I've explained how I believe Netanyahu and his son matter. I believe that the leader of Egypt matters. Um, I've gone through all these different things in different documents, but I don't want to do that here. I don't want to confuse you. I want to keep you on topic here. So if you look at the times that these guys have been in place, mainly the time that they became in office. So Reuben Revlin came in 2014. Isaac Herzog came in 2021. And Nebuchadnezzar comes in in two, um, 2002. That this matters to how it's laid out with the uh, prophets. So let's take this one verse, and I'm going to explain, as I have in many, many times. I believe that Nebuchadnezzar, Erdogan, is the white horseman. That if Erdogan is the white horseman, which I believe, I've been talking about this, I put these connections together, I've tried to explain all the, this, that he cannot be Antichrist or Jesus or even a history lesson because when John is taken up in 4.1, he clearly states it's a latter day event. And when the seals are starting to break, Jesus is holding the scroll. And so he's releasing these seals. So it's not Jesus on the ground he's not here yet he doesn't come back till the seven trump and i've explained how that occurs on how to properly read the 22 chapters of revelation in the proper order but in this case we're going to look at how this is set up so erdogan has been in office since 2002 we're going to look at this verse here and then we're going to connect it to some other verses so you can see how all this is laid out nebuchadnezzar is Erdogan. If he's the white horseman, then he's going to bring a quarter of the world into war. He was actually released, I believe, on October 9th of 2019, right before the COVID released in um, China um, in October of 2019 and became a world epidemic at the beginning of the year in 2020. So I believe he started this chain of events on Yom Kippur in 2019 on October 9th. With that, he's going to bring a quarter of the world into war soon, and he's bringing on the plagues to the planet of the first four horsemen. Um, this quarter of the world is going to be affected. Two billion people is in the Middle East, and we're going to start to see this play out as we move forward in the near future as Daniel 8 starts to take effect. Um, and I'll get into that as we go. But as this paradigm goes, I want to show you how this works real quick. So if we take the time Nebuchadnezzar was in the Bible, it indicates on certain dates he was in this month of this year of this king, these events were occurring. So when we look at this, it's amazing that they actually work in tandem, all three of these guys. When this guy did something it was in the same time that this guy had been in office, 
that this guy had been in office, and so they worked together, and I'll try to explain what I mean by that. So if you look at this first verse in Jeremiah 52, 30, it indicates something extremely important. And I'm going to explain how this works real quick. On the 3 and 20th year of Nebuchadnezzar, so that would be, if you take the 23rd year that he's been in office, that would be 2025. That indicates that this captain of the guard would carry away all these Jews. It gives you the number of them and that they would be taken away. If you go to this next set of verses, and they're right here, it indicates that in this day of Jehokimum, so you're talking about this president, and I want to explain this a little better in a second, but I'm going to go to this first. And this is an extremely clear example of what I'm talking about. So, in the day of Jehokimum, so he became in 21, so he's been in office two years right now. In the 11th year of Zedekiah, so you have to look at Zedekiah and say, okay, what was his 11th year? That would be 25. So what would be 25 in Jehokimum? He'd be in his fourth year. And in Nebuchadnezzar's, he'd be in his 23rd year. You realize that these start to actually work in tandem and into, it works together. And the prophets are telling you that you need to watch these kings because on these certain dates of these certain months of these certain years, these events are going to take place. And then you lay them down on the paradigm on the parable of the fig tree chart that I presented, you'll realize that they all lay in and that makes a, well, it makes a road map, a time chart for approximately the next four and a half years or so. And I'll explain how that works. So let's look at this example. In the days of Jehokimum, in the four, 11th year of Zedekiah, so we're talking about in this case, it would be 2025 in um, Jehokimum's uh, instance, this would be four years into his term, so and they have a seven-year term, so he'd still be there, that um, the king of Judah, this king, would be taken away and carried away from Jerusalem in captivity in the fifth month of that year. Or 25 okay so hopefully you followed that so in the 11th year or in 2025 in the fifth May fifth month of that year he would be carried away and I've talked about how this is going to happen on the paradigm but you'll start to see how all this equates together now realize that up here this would be the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, and something happens to Erdogan. And I've talked about this many times. Now, this is my concept, and no one else is talking about this. And I've tried to explain how this occurs. If Erdogan is the white horseman, he will be destroyed on the sixth seal by the wrath of the Lamb in Revelation 6:16, 6, And then you have half an hour of silence, and in eight Revelation 8, 1 and 2, it clearly states all seven seals are broken, half an hour of silence, and then he hands out seven trumpets. So anybody that's trying to equate a seal over a trumpet and overlay it into a bull phase is not looking at Revelation 8, 1 and 2 because it clearly tells you seven seals occur first. Then you have half an hour of silence, seven trumpets are handed out, and then when you get to 15.1, you have the seven bulls start, which is the wrath of God. And so there's a procession of events that you have to look at. So if 2025 is extremely important, it seems like here. And so we have to look at this stuff. But let's go to this last um, set of examples, and I'll explain to you why this is extremely important. So if... Erdogan's been in 23 years, and 25 is when this prophecy here starts to uh, take place, and I call it the Revlin prophecy because he's removed from power 
Um, he's a past king, but you realize if you once you get into the paradigm, actually Isaac Herzog is disposed of first, not killed. He's disposed of, and Revlin has to step in, and then he's disposed of, and then Antichrist over time is going to bring in a leader, um, which would be the twelfth king, based on the uh, prophecy of the seventy shepherds I've explained. Um, and if you haven't got, if you're confused at this point, you probably need to go back and watch some of the other videos that I have presented. I'll try to explain it better as we move forward. Well, let's look at this. The first word came to Jeremiah. Now, we're, look at this. We're talking about multiple different um, prophets. Um, in this case, mainly Jeremiah, but it's going to move into Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and all these other guys. But let's look at Jeremiah 25.1. So in this one, it talks about the fourth year of Jehokimum, which would be 25. It's amazing, isn't it? Everything seems to revolve around 25. There's going to be a lot going on in 25. This would be the first year of the king of Babylon. So everybody's like, well, that doesn't make sense because the, you're talking about the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar up here. How can it be the first year of him down here? If he's the white horseman and he was released and we started to see the sorrows and the birth pains affect us in October of 19, he's going to do Daniel 8 in the next few months. And what I mean by that is the Daniel 8 prophecy says this. When the Medes or the Kurds align with Persia and Iran, we will see the Grecian army come and destroy them. And if you know about your history, the Grecian army was moved to Constantinople, Turkey. It was then divided into two regions, the eastern and the western region. And so the Roman Empire has actually moved to Constantinople, Turkey. And so... When he talks about the king of Greece or the king of the north, he's talking about Turkey. He's talking about Erdogan, and Erdogan is the white horseman. So if he's the first seal, and he's unleashing the next three seals upon the world, which are plagues and economic collapse and all these things that we're seeing now, when you get to the fifth seal, <coughs> which is coming up, um, once he gets to Israel and Egypt, um, as I'm going to show you here, that fifth seal pops, and then what happens? You have the sixth seal, and that's a global earthquake with um, stars falling from heaven, the moon and the sun is blotted out, you have a global earthquake, you have all these catastrophes, people are hiding under rocks and different things like that. Equate that to Joel 2. Joel 2 is showing you a picture of Israel under major duress, under judgment, and they're being under placed under the sword. Because if you look at Joel 1, the plagues happen first. You go to Joel 2, the plagues happen second. Or the sword happens second. And so Gog is going to come in later. And you can equate Erdogan to Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Because once Daniel 8 occurs and... Um, the Kurds align with Persia and Greece or Turkey destroys them, Iran is absorbed into those ten nations that end up going through <coughs> Iraq, excuse me, Iraq, um, Jordan, Israel, the tip of Israel, uh, down by the Red Sea. They're going to end up in Egypt. They're going to be pulled up back into Israel and they're going to attack that nation called Israel with ten full nations. Um, through the new Ottoman Empire that Erdogan is building. And that it will be by the end of 23, as I've explained. But, by saying that, when he attacks Israel, he's going to be destroyed by the wrath of the Lamb in 616. Okay, and so he's dead. And he's buried, as it indicates in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Because once they ran falls, that concludes Daniel 8. Then we start forming Ezekiel 38 and 39. We go from Iran to Egypt and then back to Israel where they're then destroyed and all of those armies are destroyed by the hand of Jesus or the wrath of the Lamb, which is the Son, not the Father. The wrath of the Father is 15-1 or the seven bulls. And they don't happen until after the trumpet phase. 
So you're not appointed for the wrath of God, which are the seven bowls. And so I keep saying you're going to end up going to the seventh trumpet. Then you're not appointed for the wrath of God, which are the seven bowls in Revelation 15.1. So look at this and how this is laid out. So if Erdogan's in there for 23 years and that ends up in 25, then look at this. In the fourth year of Jehokimum, which would be in 25, because he got in 21, it would be the first year of the king of Babylon. Well, if Erdogan is the first seal and he dies at the end of this year, he's going to be resurrected in 24, because there's a seven-month burial, you got scorpions coming out of the pit, you got all kinds of stuff going on here. If those seven months pass, you're going to end up in 24, okay? By the time he's resurrected and becomes Antichrist, you get to 25, it would still be the first year of Antichrist because you go from 24 to 25, and so that would make sense that he would be the fourth year of Jehokimum or Isaac Herzog would be the first year of Antichrist. And so why is this the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, in 25? Because he's going to die as he's sieging Jerusalem on October of 23. And I can show you how that works because the prophets told us this was going to happen. Actually, two of them told us this. <coughs> Excuse me. So, do you realize, though, that both these leaders... Reuben Revlin and Isaac Herzog will be captured and will be removed from the picture. And over time, Antichrist will place in a leader, which in this case, because Isaac Herzog is the 11th president, this would bring in the 12th president, which if you look at Enoch's prophecy of the 70 shepherds, there are 12 kings at the end that uh, rule over Israel from the time of the conception of the state of Israel from May 14th of two, uh, 1948 till today. Isaac Herzog is the 11th one. Once he's removed, that would then bring in the 12th king. Once that 12th king season is over, um, Enoch clearly states that the picture is finished. And so, um, <coughs> so when you look at the paradigm that I presented, you're going to realize that there's a lot of verses attached to all of these time frames that I've given you because it matters. <coughs> so it's, I thought it was extremely amazing that if you take the three kings and if you lay them out based on the verses I'm getting ready to give you, you'll realize that this king, this king, and this king are all in the same place at the same time when they should be based on the length of time that they've been in office. I think that's extremely important. I think it's extremely important that Benjamin Netanyahu, I believe, is his last name is found in the Bible. And I keep trying to explain to people this is extremely important and how this is set up and laid. Now, I call this a Nostradamus thing because I believe it's close to something that Nostradamus came up with. Look at the spelling of Netanyahu. Okay. The only difference in these two names is if you take the H out of Net Nathaniel, which is in the Bible, explains who this guy is, the I and the Y in both names, and you remove the U, that these basically are the same names. Um, look how close they are. And that he talks about them in these passages which are in the paradigm it actually works with the paradigm and it talks about the son of Netanyahu Nathaniel okay but look at those look when you I have to remove a couple things to make these names almost exactly the same you have to look at that and go why did Netanyahu get reelected as prime minister and how's he going to affect this game at the end I just think it's something that should be looked at and so to me I believe that one of Netanyahu's son will affect it, um, affect the paradigm and the end times as we move forward, and that it will be Yar or Abnor. Um, I 
think in this case, I believe it's Yar that is the military son um, and not Abner. So, so I don't want to get too far off. I just want to realize that Netanyahu, I believe, will, his son and probably Netanyahu himself, Benjamin, will play a integral part in end times and will affect this picture greatly as we move forward. Um, he is not the president and he's not the actual leader. Um, depending on who you talk to, but if you go out and you Google the president or leader of Israel, it is Isaac Herzog. So I believe that we, as I've been talking about in this paradigm, that in the spring of 23, we'd see locust plagues, famine start to hit the uh, Israel. Um, not only economic collapse, just the whole system will start to break down. When you get into Daniel 10, 1 and 3, it indicates something extremely important. Now, Daniel is on the ground, and he knows this, this is happening. I've talked about this. Daniel is fairly high up in the organization of Iran. He's been there for 70 years. He's under Cyrus now, and he is a you know main official. And so he's seeing what's going on on the ground. So he would have good intel, and he would know what something would be happening. Looks like maybe I spelled that wrong. So Daniel is sickened for three weeks. And it tells us that as you get into Daniel 4, that it happens on the first month, the 24th day, Daniel has this spell. So he's sickened for three weeks, and then on the 24th, he has this vision. And so I've been bringing this to people's attention. Now, I had found this later in the paradigm. This was a verse, these two sets of verses came later. I had found all this other stuff first, and then these two came um, as I was studying later um, in the paradigm. I've added them. But it didn't change the paradigm. It just added to the paradigm. So he sickened for three weeks. Um, you can see that in Daniel uh, 10, 1 to 3. And on the 24th, three weeks later, he has this vision on the 24th day of the first month. And this is in Daniel 10 and 4. As you start to walk through, you're going to start to realize that based on these three names up here, if you Google them, Zedekiah, Jehokimim, and Nebuchadnezzar, you'll realize that if you Google them in like Bible Gateway, they're going to come up with all these verses based on each and every one of these kings. And that if you lay out all these verses, you realize that they all have time, state, time and date stamps that are built into these verses. But it's amazing that when you lay them out, that each and every one of the prophets are saying exactly the same thing, and they're telling you, cross-referencing themselves, that these things are going to occur based on these kings above, and that they've been in office for a certain period of time, and that on these dates of this year, of this month, of this king, these things are going to happen, and that if you take the other two kings that they've been in their certain time that they've been in the position, they reflect the same time that this guy's been in position. It's amazing that they all work hand in hand together. And so when you come down here and you look at this first set of verses, you say, now I equate Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39 to Erdogan, or the, even the White Horseman, or the First Seal. They're all the same, okay? I don't equate them any different. So Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39 is Erdogan. Erdogan is the first seal or the white horseman of Revelation. And he was going to die on the sixth seal by the wrath of the Lamb or the Son in Revelation 6.16. 6, then you start the trumpet phase based on Revelation 8, 1 and 2. If you look at these verses, you're going to realize that it says the same thing. That Erdogan or Gog besieges Jerusalem on this date. So I just want to show you this one example real quick so I can show you what I mean. So in this verse, on the ninth year of Zedekiah, in the tenth month of Nebuchadnezzar, um, or in the tenth month, so if you take the ninth year of Zedekiah, the ninth year of Zedekiah would be 23, so 2023, so we're talking about the um, ninth year of Zedekiah 
um, which would be 23, 10th month would be October, and in the 11th year of Zedekiah, in the 4th month of the ninth day, the city was broken up. And so look at where that would place you. Um, so there's a two-year gap here, the ninth year and the 11th year. He's telling you that something's going to happen between these two times a period of time, which is Israel will be sieged and almost two years later it will be broken up because they do not break in right away. It takes them, go back in the history, it took them time to get into Israel. Okay, it wasn't like an overnight sensation. They literally see to the point these people were starving. You go to Jeremiah, those people had nothing at the end. They were eating themselves. They were eating their children. It was terrible. So realize that it's not going to be an overnight sensation. Jerusalem won't fall overnight. But when you have ten full nations that are attacking them, they're decimated on the sixth seal, then this residue rises up and still keeps attacking them as we move into the Antichrist phase, you're going to start to realize that this is going to get bleak for Israel and they're going to be under major duress. So that's what I mean. These matter. And so if you look at this, this would be the 10th. And this matters to us this year. Okay, because the 10th month of this king... Or, I mean, the ninth year of this king is 23, and this is October of 23. And so we're talking about October of this year. And so this is why I keep saying this, I believe, is extremely important. And that we will actually see Jerusalem and the city totally broken in and sieged within two years. And that will be in 25. And that would then start the rebuilding of the new temple or the third temple. Everybody talks about the temple being rebuilt now. It won't happen until after the sixth seal happens. And we see this event occur. The city will be broken up. And then Antichrist comes in in 25, as I just showed you before, in the paradigm. Now, I don't want to confuse people because if Erdogan dies, he's buried. Okay, as Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us, he is buried. Then you can go to a number of resources like Isaiah 14 and realize that when Satan is thrown out on the fifth trumpet, because now we're in the trumpet phase, not the seals phase. The seals phase is first. Half an hour of silence, you get into the trumpets. You got the first four trumpets that destroy a third of the planet, probably the communist areas. You get to the fifth trumpet. The pit opens up, the sixth trumpet, the Antichrist, and false prophet rise. The seventh trump, the Lord comes back. Okay, so realize there's a procession of events. But also realize that if Erdogan dies on the sixth seal, he's going to be resurrected into Antichrist as Satan is thrown down on the fifth trumpet, and he's brought back as a resurrected Antichrist on the sixth trumpet. For the short period of time of the 1260 days to abomination. If this works hand in hand together, we will see a siege on Jerusalem by October of 23. Okay. Um, as it shows down here. I'm sorry, I went a little too far up the list there. So um, he's. He's seeing this down here, okay? So we're going to see an attack on Iran. This is the start of Iran's attack. We saw that um, security guy go to um, the temple on the 3rd. The start of this procession of events. Now look at Israel today. I've done many videos on how that's affecting Israel now and how that's going to affect us as we move forward. you got all these proxies in Iran attacking Israel this very moment. Israel's going to fail at this, and Turkey's going to come in in a short period of time once his election occurs. Okay? If Israel is being attacked by October 10th of 2023, then we'll see Daniel 8 happen fairly quickly, because Erdogan is going to um, invade um, right after his election on May 14th of 2020, 
uh, 3, um, which is Israel's birthday. Um, he'll win that election. Um, I believe he will because it tells us here that he's Nebuchadnezzar and he's going to play this part and that he's going to play this out. And so as you move through this procession of all these events, and I'm not going to walk through all this stuff, you'll realize that I presented this for a reason because all these events matter to what's coming up. Um, so, and I've laid this out on a timeline based on the parable of the fig tree and how that all affects this parable or this paradigm. So let's say this really is truly a paradigm and it truly reflects these kings up here in the times that they've been in office based on the times that these kings were in office in the past compared to these kings in the future that we can then track what's going to happen based on what the prophets were giving us based on the date stamps that they gave us in these verses and um, if you take this Ezekiel you'll realize that it says the same thing as all these other guys and so multiple prophets are saying the same thing it even gives you a timestamp to the point where you can actually pin it down to a day potentially okay so I take this as Isaac Herzog will also be captured at this very time because there's a prophecy in Daniel um, 1, 1 verse 1 and 2 and also if you get into 2 Kings 24 1 that we would see Isaac Herzog captured and taken away into Babylon um, on this date that Israel is attacked. And that's extremely important because that would mean Isaac Herzog is not in a position of power anymore and Reuben Revlin would have to step back into this position of power because Netanyahu is the prime minister. It's not He's not the leader. So Reuben Revlin would have to come in and take his position. But I'm going to show you, as the prophecy paradigm indicates, that he's also captured in 25, actually in May. And he's removed, which would then bring in the last king or the 12th king. So if we come back down here, you realize that on the 10th, if they're just besieging Jerusalem, that we're going to have a sixth seal event happen and he's going to devastate these armies that go against this this country of Israel. And if you go into um, Daniel 7, I think this is extremely important. Now, nobody wants to take the future into Daniel 7 to 12, but I do because he tells you a lot of interesting stuff here. So if you go to Daniel 7, you go to Daniel 7, 24, oops, excuse me, tells you something extremely important. Ten horns are ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them okay and this is extremely important these two words matter everybody wants to just know these things out ten kings rise and then another will rise after them which means these ten kingdoms don't exist anymore and he will diversify from the first and subdued three kings and that's what i keep saying look the ten nations will be decimated on the sixth seal that will turn into a residue around israel and jerusalem remember they're attacking them for almost two years you're going to see that turn into a region of four this residue will turn into four and then one shall rise called the little horn and overthrew three other kings. So it works like this. Ten start out, turn into four, that to turn into one. Okay, because three kings are subdued and you have one left. But it is the region of those four kingdoms which make up the beast kingdom. Because they're all four regions involved in the footprint of the beast kingdom i show you how that works in the daniel statue um, how that's laid out in the footprint how that affected 
Alexander the Great's footprint, how it affects the Ottoman footprint of World War I, and how that's going to affect the new footprint that Erdogan's going to present to us as we move forward. So it's extremely important that you understand at this moment, as I work through this, that seven seals break first, a half an hour of silence, and then seven trumpets occur. So that you do not take the first horseman and make him Antichrist or Jesus when they come up on the trumpet phases in the fifth to seventh trumpet. They can't be the first horseman or the white horseman or the first seal. It has to be somebody else. It's Gog of Ezekiel 38, 39. After he brings a quarter of the world into war, the Middle East here, he dies on the sixth seal, he's buried for seven months, and then he comes out of the hole as Antichrist. The first four trumpets sound, devastates a third of the planet, the communist areas, in Revelation 8, 7 through 12. The eagle sounds and warns us that he's throwing Satan out of heaven and that we should watch the last three woes because they're attached to the last three trumpets. And what are those? The fifth trumpet is the pit opens. The scorpions come out for five months. That's important on my timeline and paradigm for a reason because the Antichrist comes out shortly after that. The sixth trumpet is the Antichrist and the false prophet rise because Satan is thrown down on the fifth trumpet from like a star. He does not touch the grave. Isaiah 14 clearly tells you abomination uh, um, comes out of the ground. Satan does not touch the ground. And we have this resurrected Erdogan or Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39, which died attacking Israel up here. Yes, he's a supernatural being. He's not Macron or Obama or any of those guys because nobody's going to follow them. They're not going to follow Putin. And if you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, go back into the old Bibles, Rosh is never even mentioned because it's a mistranslation of Hebrew from chief leader or prince, which is Rosh in Hebrew and has nothing to do with Russia. And if you look at the statue, you'll realize that the seventh kingdom, before you get to the eighth kingdom, is the Ottoman Empire. And so we're still in the Ottoman kingdom before we get to the beast kingdom, which is the eighth kingdom, which is coming up in 25. So Antichrist would rise. The bottomless pit would open on the fifth trumpet. Antichrist um, rises on the sixth trumpet. And then look at all these dates and stuff that start to pop up. We start to get into all these prophets talking about how Egypt's being affected, how his Antichrist is going to stop the continual burnt offerings, how Egypt is going to be broken by Antichrist. Not just by anybody, by Antichrist. This is in 25. These are in 24. If you take these dates of these stamps that I keep showing you and how it affects these kings, you're going to start to realize how this affects everybody. And I'm not going to go through all these dates because I'm going to show you on the paradigm here quickly. And I want to try to keep this video under an hour. So Antichrist is going to affect Egypt. Egypt is one thing I've talked about. If you go from Iran, which completes Daniel 8 and the destruction of Iran by Turkey, once the Kurds join, the Medes join Persia, the Medes and Persia align, Turkey comes over, smashes them, they drive over to Egypt. Wow, affects Egypt greatly. And Egypt is the king of the south. So they're going to affect the king of the north. And why is Damascus affected? Because Jerusalem is being affected by two years of siege. And the king of the south and the north are going through Damascus around this, this catastrophe going on in Jerusalem. And so Damascus will have no stones left on it by the time it's done. And um, the king of the north and the south um, complete their mission by the end of 27 um, during the fall feast. Now, when you get to this um, part here and the city is broken up and the lands turn into four regions, because you go from ten regions up here where they're destroyed on this Six seal all the way down 
to uh, May 10th, and you start, you see this breakup of the 10 nations because they're decimated. God destroys all these nations, and a residue rises up, but they still keep attacking Israel and Jerusalem. They're not giving up. They break in the walls and Reuben, Revlin, or Zedekiah flees. Now, you can go to watch Jeremiah, the movie or anything. It shows you all this. It shows you exactly how it's going to happen. Zedekiah flees. He's caught on Jer plains of Jericho and his eyes are taken out and his two sons are killed. And he's removed to Babylon or Turkey. This happens on May 10th of 2025 based on these verses. Okay. I say the temple will be rebuilt after the sixth, after Antichrist comes down, the treaty is signed. Um, and so they will have about approximately two years to rebuild the third temple between May 10th of 25 to July 19th of 27. And you have abomination based on my paradigm and my parable of the fig tree occurring on July 19th of 2027. And yes, these are very specific dates. I show you exactly how this is happening and where I come up with this stuff so that I'm just not throwing this out at you nilly-willy. This is where I came up with this stuff. And I'm going to show you here pretty soon how this all lays out on the paradigm itself. You realize that Netanyahu... That Netanyahu comparison to Nostradamus matters in these verses and how his son is going to affect Antichrist and he's going to kill this leader that Netanyahu places into um, leadership once both kings of Israel are removed and captured. So Antichrist puts in a leader. He's shortly killed. I believe it's um, Abner or... Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's Abner that's the... I was trying to remember which one is the military one. It might be Yar. I keep trying to forget. I'm dyslexic, so I would get confused on that. One of these boys will matter. I believe one of Netanyahu's sons will uh, actually kill this leader. And then we start getting into very bleak times in e Egypt's being under major duress. Um, Jordan's under major duress. Israel's under major duress. All these things are happening. If you go through all these verses and stuff, you end up at the end of the story where we start to see the bowls of God's wrath start to fall and we're removed here on um, the Feast of Trumpets on Rosh Hashanah um, during the seventh trumpet when the Lord comes back because that would fulfill the fall feast. The spring feasts were fulfilled when Jesus was here originally and died and was crucified. We just had that Passover uh, week. Um, he will fulfill the fall feast, as the Jewish people believe, uh, when he comes back. If you look at Psalm 90.10, it clearly states that the fourscore generation will not pass before all things happen. If you take the fourscore generation May 14th of two, uh, excuse me, May 14th of 1948 to uh, May 14th of 2028. All things would happen before May 14th of 2028, and so we must look at the fall feast of 27. And so why it's why I believe these dates are so extremely important. So now I've explained, hopefully, without confusing you so much that you don't understand what I'm talking about how the paradigm works with the dates and the three leaders of today with the three leaders of the past. And it's based on the time that they're in office. It's based on their position and where they are located also. So it, extreme, it matters. Now in this one, the, this is the paradigm chart timeline. And you'll realize that the Feast of Tabernacles is basically the end of the story in 27. Because we are now tabernacling with the Lord Jesus. We're uh, resurrected or raptured um, or resurrected, depending on if you're dead or not, um, because the living and the dead are both raised at the same time on the Feast of Trumpets on this two day event. Now, I speculate that it's on October 2nd because this is a sabbatical Saturday. And it falls during the Jewish calendar of the Feast of Trumpets. 
and the east gate can be open. And the only time the east gate can be open is on a full moon or a sabbatical Saturday. So the Lord could come back at that time. And I speculate that on this date that we would have to blow the shafar in the temple that's been rebuilt after abomination. The two witnesses are dead. We would have to blow the shafar to bring the Lord back through the gate. My speculation. How this works, though, on the paradigm is I use the parable of the fig tree in Psalm 9010. And I use Daniel 8 and Daniel 10. Um, Daniel 8 and Daniel 12 and four dates that mattered. And I want to walk through those real quick. So he, Daniel gives us four dates. 1260 days, 1290 days, 1335 days, and 2300 days. This is extremely important. And it also matters because most people don't understand when the sorrows and the birth pains are, tribulation is, or great tribulation, and how these start. So if you look at the sorrows and birth pains, that would start at the first seal. And I talked about how I believe that occurred when Erdogan invaded Syria on Yom Kippur on October 9th. And then we saw COVID come out. And by the end of that year, in 20, or beginning of 2020, it was a global pandemic. So I believe he released the started to release the sorrows. The sorrows run to the time that the treaty is signed with the nations and we have the 1260 days to abomination and then you start great tribulation. So realize that the sorrows and birth pains are from the first seal to the signing of the treaty with the nations. Tribulation starts at the signing of the tribulation because you're 12, about the 1260 days of four and a half years or three and a half years or the 42 months and Antichrist is down on the ground. He's thrown on the ground here. He's resurrected. He stops the continual burn offerings. Um, he signs the treaty with the nations. Tribulation starts 1260 days to abomination. Everybody seems to get the 1290 days wrong because he talks about stopping the continual burnt offerings to the time of abomination. That would be 1290 days, so it's 30 days prior to the signing of the treaty to abomination. 1335 days, which is another one I think most people get wrong. 1335 days God clearly tells us he shortens the second half 75 um, he shortens the second half that once the two witnesses perish that the end of the story is here and that not to look back because it won't matter and also the elect that were selected back here in the seventh seal um, once their uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 occurs we have the seventh um, trumpets in the half an hour of silence and all that those 144,000 are elect are selected here and they go against antichrist most of them don't survive he shortens the second half because he has to or none of them would make it for another three and a half years and so he tells us this that's 1,335 days, so if you take the 1,260 days, add 75 days of that, that would be 1,335 days. That's how that number comes about. It goes from the signing of the treaty to uh, the actual um, trumpet, seventh trumpet, and the Lord would come back. That would be the rapture. All the elect would come back. That happens in Revelation 15, 1 and 2, right before the wrath of God. Those are the bulls seven bowls that happens in one hour of god's wrath 15 days if you go on the biblical calendar of 1000 years of ours to one day of his the 2300 days you have to go from the feast of tabernacles in 27 because this is where we're tabernacling with god we've been raptured at this point on the feast you have this little gap of the bowls on the wicked we're with the Lord. If you take that 17th date of October, run it back 2,300 days, that takes you to June 30th of 2021. Now, why is this extremely important? Because we need to understand these time frames and how they're all placed together. And if you see this continual burnt offering stop 30 days 
or stop by Antichrist, then he's going to sign a treaty 30 days later and we can start to get actual markers in what's going on in time. If you go back to June of 21 and you start to realize how this was starting to ramp up in the Middle East and everything, you'll realize that as we get into these dates, and I'll blow this up real quick so you can start to see this, I start to plug in all those dates that I just showed you on the last, um, on that Word file. Okay. And this is one of those dates. On October 10th, the 23, Erdogan besieges Jerusalem. Okay. On the 25th, or um, he gives the power for one hour, that's 15 days, he would then destroy these nations. Then we would have seven months of burial. We would see the seventh seal broken, the selection of 144,000. The four winds are being held back until when? The sixth trumpet, when they're released. Okay, four winds are released, but they're held here. You get into all these dates. All these dates and everything that I've given you here on this paradigm have verses attached, as I showed you in the verses prior. Look at all these guys that are talking exactly the same thing. Joel 1, we talked about spring, how the plagues are going to affect them. We get into Jeremiah. You get into Ezekiel, they're saying the same thing. Daniel starts talking about it. They're all giving you time stamps. Kings is talking about this. You, you talk about all these guys and how they radiate through and they all match up together. They're saying exactly the same thing. Once you lay this out on a chart, you realize that what was amazing, I'm going to blow this back out real quick. What I thought was amazing was when you looked at this chart, I had not had all this information in here. Okay. I just had the parable of the fig tree with these four dates attached and I was trying to figure out how that all worked based on the Jewish calendars and the fall feasts and everything. When I found the paradigm and I realized these three modern day kings actually worked with three kings in the past, I realized these date stamps matter to today. And that if we take these date stamps and we plug them into today, and I'm coming into today right now here. Okay, we are right here. Okay, on January 24th, Daniel is told that Iran is going to fall soon. What are we seeing over now or right now? Iran is getting ready to fall soon. Israel is going to attack them. Okay, but that's going to end up bad for Israel because they're going to fail. And Turkey's going to come in later, and they're going to be decimated on the sixth seal by the wrath of the Lamb. Okay. This would start Daniel 8. Daniel 8 finishes when Iran folds, and it's destroyed because the Medes will join Persia, and then Turkey will crush them. Once Iran falls, if you go to Ezekiel 38 and 39, what's one of the first countries listed? Persia, Iran. They're absorbed into the ten nations that go against Israel. They attack these ten nations attack Israel. They're decimated into a residue of four regions. Remember? Go to Daniel 7 24, I believe. Talks about ten nations reduced to four regions ends up one because three capitulate so this is extremely important nobody talks about this stuff because i guess they don't see that it says after the ten nations four regions effectively occur that residue rises you're talking about alexander the great same thing happened his kingdom broke down into four generals those four generals then did their thing but in this case it clearly states that a little horn will come out and antichrist will overthrow the other three regions and turn them into a beast kingdom in that footprint i've showed you that footprint as you walk through all these dates and everything and all these different time stamps based on all these verses you will realize that this builds a calendar of events is this really going to happen
I don't know. I'm waiting for Daniel 8 to occur back here. Because if Turkey gets into this right after the election on uh, May 14th and starts to push those Kurds down um, southeast and Erbil, the capital city of the regional um, Kurdistan people fall in Iraq, um, which we also have a green zone there. If that falls and that collapses and all these people start to get pushed down towards Baghdad and Shush Iran as it stipulates in the prophecy that they would the Kurdish people would fold down into the province of Elam, around the Ulai River, around Shush Iran. And if you look at Baghdad, that's just west of there. So I think they'll pull, pull down there. They'll start to move. Now, if you go back in history, what happened? The Kurdistan people started to go against Iran, but then realized that Turkey was basically going to decimate them. So the Kurds and Iran joined to try to eliminate Nebuchadnezzar, but that failed. And so, in this case, it's going to fail. And so Nebuchadnezzar would then, um, or in this case, Erdogan would destroy Iran, and then he would head to Egypt and to Israel and be decimated by the sixth seal in October. And once you start moving into the signing of the treaty, and you start into this next one, you'll start to realize that the son of Netanyahu matters in the paradigm. Um, it shows when Egypt's under duress. It shows that all this stuff is happening. It shows when the two witnesses. It shows you a complete um, timeline for the next four or so years. Okay? Four and a half years. Look, things are going to get extremely bad out here. We are walking into a real nightmare in the next few months. Um, Erdogan is going to unleash a, a nightmare in the Middle East. I don't know how China and Russia are going to affect us once we see the trumpets hit, which is right after October, probably. Because if you think about that, you get down in here, you have the sixth seal event occur, Erdogan's decimated, you have fun, seven months of burials, and then what happens is the se you have the half an hour of silence, they hand out seven trumpets, a third of the planet is decimated, which are the communist areas, so I'm not sure the communist areas, I mean, you have to think about what he's talking about when he decimates a third of the planet. What areas would they be? He's not going to affect the Christians and the Jews, or the Muslims, He's going to affect the people that aren't of that area, which are the communists. And he's going to judge them based on where they are. So I believe this is coming. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not against any group of people. I'm just telling you that's what the Bible seems to stipulate. Then you have the fifth trumpet, which is bottomless pit open, the Antichrist and the false prophet rise. And then you have the fall equinox right after that. You have the continual burnt offering stop. You have Antichrist. Um, signing the treaty, and think about this, from October to March, you have scorpions coming out of the pit for five months. Five months, October to March. Wow, interesting timing. Antichrist shuts down the continual burnt offerings because he's resurrected here. And think about that. Everybody's like, well, how would they know? Well, you're going to build a city called Ham and Gog over the top of this, and it's going to be televised because they're going to be burying these armies that have been decimated in Ezekiel 38 and 39 for seven months, it's going to be a spectacle. And there's going to be reporters and stuff all over the place. So realize that I'm giving you all these timestamps and stuff for a reason. Now, they just fit in. I didn't have to adjust my, my dates down here. I already had them set up. I've documented this in my other videos, so it's not like a manipulation thing. I laid them out i showed you this over time this has been an evolving thing that's happening out here and it keeps evolving because then i found these dates back here about january 3rd and 21 days we would start to see a war against israel and iran and how this would turn up bad and if you go to isaiah 28 to 38 i believe are the verses that i used you'll realize that egypt and Turkey aligned with Israel to eliminate the Syrian. But then Isaiah 
And, Jer and uh, Jeremiah come back and say, well, that's going to turn out terrible for you. Why are you trusting the Babylonian, Nebuchadnezzar, Erdogan, when he's your nemesis, when you should have relied on God, and now he's going to send a judgment against you. The king of the north is coming against you, and he is going to decimate your country. Two-thirds of your population is going to die, a third by plagues, a third by the sword, and a third is going to be removed to a remnant to the hidden place in Jordan called Edom. And this is then, that would then take us into the time of the 1260 days. Okay? Because if you go to Revelation 12, what happens? Satan comes out. The red dragon is not China. It is Satan. He comes out of heaven. He chases the woman for 1260 days into the wilderness. You're talking about the remnant that come out of this war here. As only a third of the Jews believe in the true Son of God, which is Jesus, and they will be saved from this judgment that's coming. So hopefully this all makes sense. I tried to lay this out. Um, I've given you all, or I, you know, all the different definitions, you know, how Israel became a nation, the time that's a strong generation, all these different things matter. The parables matter. Um, the time that we're in now. You just had um, Passover week. We're in the new season. I believe that we need to understand the season that we're in. And I believe that we're in the season of the end. And that by the time we hit the Feast of Tabernacles and Trumpets in 27, um, this will be the end. So we'll see what happens in the next four and a half years. Um, I believe that this is going to ramp up quickly and I just wanted to go over this quicker. This is a little shorter video and it explains how I came up with all these dates and times and different things like that. So God bless. Find the open door. Find Jesus. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer any questions and if you don't see the connections, I will do my best to um, explain them to you. Um, God bless and have a great night.